per our weekly schedule, I want to thank everyone for coming out to one of our COVID-19 pandemic briefings. The city of Richmond still remains in phase three of Governor Northam's reopening plan for Virginia, and the city government remains in phase three of our operational plan as well. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, the services we provide under phase three of uh, the reopening process, we ask that you go to richmondgov.com slash COVID-19. And if you have any questions uh, about uh, the status of the Commonwealth, but also the city of Richmond and the governor's plan, we ask that you go to uh, rvastrong.org slash reopening guidance. As of this morning, the Richmond City Health District is reporting. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we've had 5,542 total cases here in the city of Richmond. Unfortunately, we've lost 78 Richmond residents to this disease. I'm gonna ask that we take a moment of silence in remembrance of those that we've lost. Thank you. You know, I continue to encourage everyone in Richmond to act responsibly in the face of this pandemic. If not for yourself, then for the more at-risk members uh, of the Richmond community. You're gonna hear from Dr. Avula momentarily about our health status, but we have to remain vigilant uh, as cases across the country continue to rise as uh, the fall and winter are uh, upon us. Uh, we will be obviously gathering indoors more and that means that the lessons that we've learned since the beginning of the pandemic have to be leaned on during this most challenging time and that means first using your mask. We are still in the midst of uh, the mask mandate here in the city of Richmond and here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. They are mandatory. Um, if you need a mask, we ask that you go to rvastrong.org slash get a mask and you can pick them up for free. Remember, we have a mask network throughout the city with more than 50 sites where you can pick up a free mask at places like your local library. So we ask that you utilize that option. In addition, uh, there's another way you can protect yourself here in our community, and that is to get a flu shot as well. It is also flu season on top of a pandemic too. There are weekly free vaccination clinics around the city from now until December. And we ask you you visit the health district's website or call 804-205-3501 for more information. In addition to providing free flu shots, I'm grateful for the Richmond City Health District uh, in their efforts to provide free testing opportunities as well. There are plenty, plenty of free options around the city. The next is tomorrow, November 5, from 9 to 11 a.m. at the 4th Avenue RRHA Senior Building. Once again, 9 to 11 a.m. tomorrow at the 4th Avenue RRHA a senior building. Remember, these testing events are always free and available to the broad public. You don't uh, have to, whether it's your insurance status, your immigration status, they are free and open to the public. You can expect your results back in two to three days. And if you have any questions, once again, we ask that you call 804-205-3501. Now I'll have Dr. Danny Avula to come and give us an update on Richmond's health status currently here in a new month, in the month of November. Dr. Avula. Thank you, Mayor Stoney. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, well, it seems week in, week out, I come in and offer more bad news. 
Uh, last Thursday, the United States hit its single-day highest record for case counts at over 91,000 cases in one day. Our trends here in Richmond uh, look like they're heading the same direction as the rest of the country. We continue to see the sustained trend over uh, the last month or so. Our, our current case rate, 11.7 cases per 100,000 population. Our percent positivity continues to hover just below 4%. Um, and just maybe as one uh, point of, of context, we, we had a community testing event last week in Eastern Henrico. Our percent positivity at that single event alone was over 30%. And so there is more and more circulating disease. Again, symptoms are uh, a very good indicator of disease. And if you are at all symptomatic, I would ask that uh, you go and get tested as quickly as possible and refrain from engaging in social activity. Uh, as we continue to monitor the clusters, it's the, it's the same stories. It's continued group gathering, it's weddings uh, and, and social gatherings, birthday parties. Um, uh, consistent over the last four weeks as well is the increasing case count among our 20 to 29 population. A um, couple of other updates, you know, obviously we had a, an election day here this week. Uh, by all accounts, by my own observations and others, uh, the, uh, the social distancing and mask enforcement uh, occurred very effectively at polls, but if people are still concerned about any potential exposure, uh, the mayor mentioned a testing event we have tomorrow. We also have three testing events coming up next week, and I would ask that you go to our website, rchd.com, or call our hotline, 804-205-3501, uh, if you are at all concerned about exposure and want to get tested. Uh, usually we recommend about five days after any potential exposure is a good time to do that. Um, vaccine updates. I, I shared last week that, uh, you know, we're still awaiting these clinical trials to, to be completed. It looks like they continue to push those dates back. Uh, at this point, we likely will not see the closure of clinical trials until the beginning of December. They still have to go through the FDA emergency use authorization process, uh, and the federal government is now saying, you know, it may be the end of December, the beginning of January, before we see that phase one vaccine uh, hit the streets, although the streets is figurative, it'll technically hit. Uh, hospitals and healthcare organizations and then long-term care facilities. Uh, and so we will continue to keep you posted about that and let you know when that first batch of, of vaccine comes here to Richmond um, and, and where we're deploying that. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of questions about holidays. Obviously, we just had Halloween, but now everybody's thinking about Thanksgiving uh, and, the, and the December holidays as we head into those. Um, and I, I guess what I will just offer is that we will need to, to think differently about how we do family gatherings this year. I think there are steps that we can take, uh, including thinking about what we're doing in the days leading up to that family gathering, how we actually operate during the family gathering itself, and then what we do when we leave that fa family gathering that will help minimize the, the, the chance that you get sick and that you spread COVID to others. Um, so, you know, as you're, as you're planning a family gathering, you know, the, the best and safest thing is to, is to not do it, if at all possible. Uh, but I recognize that many families will want to continue traditions and, and will be willing to do it with some adjustments. Um, I would ask that people think about how much they are uh, cloistering themselves in the days leading up to uh, that, that gathering. If they can at all uh, quarantine themselves for 14 days, uh, and, and minimize any exposure, that's the safest thing to do. Um, if, if 14 days is unreasonable, then think about getting tested before you go into that family gathering. At the gathering itself, uh, the same guidelines we've been offering for workplaces and schools and everywhere else, try to keep as much outside as possible, try to maintain distance and enforce mask wearing as much as possible, um, and if at all possible, do not stay within household units. Uh, try, to, try to stay in another house and kind of limit your gathering times to, to meals and, and other uh, social engagements. And then once you leave that family gathering and come back to, to home, wherever that is, consider again uh, a 14-day quarantine 
quarantine period to monitor yourself for symptoms. Uh, now I know that this sounds difficult and it sounds crazy to a lot of people, but I think this is the kind of discipline and rigor that we're going to need to put into place uh, if we're gonna uh, have, have any chance of, of not seeing a spike like we saw back in, uh, in May and in August here this winter. So uh, we will post some guidance shortly on our website uh, and I'll, I imagine there'll be many more opportunities for us to kind of talk through some of the details of, of how to do holidays safely. Uh, but I know it's on everybody's mind and, and want to just reinforce the things that we've been saying. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Avula. And I, I just want to just um, add some comments to your uh, request for our community to be careful once again in this holiday season. Uh, when we had Halloween just a few days ago, we asked folks to do it safely or do our best to avoid it. Uh, we have to obviously tweak our lives a little bit here in 2020 because this is not 2019 or any year prior to that. We have to do some things differently. And what Dr. Vula is asking of all of us in our community, particularly around this holiday in terms of Thanksgiving and also looking into Christmas as well, is that we have to be careful. We have to put public health first. The safety of not only yourself, but also your family too. If you have a, you know, a, a grandmother or a grandfather, um, uh, remember them when taking these steps uh, towards, uh, uh, towards Thanksgiving. Uh, remember them when you plan out this uh, upcoming holiday. Uh, they are obviously the ones who are certainly the most at risk and we need to do everything possible to not only keep yourself safe but also keep them safe too. With that, we will take some questions. Great. Jim? COVID-19? Exactly. Let's go. Well, first, I want to thank every single Richmond voter who participated in the process. This has been a tumultuous year. Uh, and to see the number of voters who showed up at the polls, particularly since September 18th, it, it's something I, I want to brag about because we had nearly 70,000 people cast early votes between September 18th and October 31st. That's something we should be proud of. And uh, I know that the registrar's office is doing uh, their due diligence to ensure that the public can uh, have these results. Um, uh, every indication that my team has seen uh, of the results thus far, uh, we feel uh, confident that we are you know, going to be successful and uh, there's going to be another four years of a, of a Stony administration. So. Uh, the question is that the, the chairman of the electoral board said that we were up six of nine districts. Um, how do, do I want to add to that? Yeah, I would love to add three more districts to it, but you know, it's six of nine and it just shows that you know, we have, um, you know, we've, uh, we tried our best to build a broad based coalition from all across the city uh, in multiple districts from the east end to south side. To, to north side, you know, parts of the west end as well. And um, I think that you saw voters come to the polls since September 18th uh, who agreed with our positive vision for the city of Richmond, but also uh, they also appreciated our uh, progressive uh, record over the course of the last four years. I am um, elated. I love this job. I love the city of Richmond. And, um, you know, I am always humbled by the power of the voter. Uh, the ability for them to actually choose their leaders is no uh, better. Um, um, uh, there's, there's no better way to, I think, let your voice be heard than, than going to the polls and, and choosing your leaders. And I am um, grateful for another four years. And just to follow up to that, you know, for several hours we were having seen some reporting issues on the registrar's website. Now this morning, the Department of Elections or the State 
state has been updating a little bit more consistently. Have you been briefed by the registrar what the issue was last night with getting those numbers out? In time? I have not been briefed by the registrar. The question was the issue between the reporting, the registrar's office, the state as well, the sites not being uh, congruent, I guess you can say. Uh, I have not been briefed on it yet, uh, but here's the deal. What I know, Ben, is that this is the first time that we've ever done anything like this before, right? To have 70,000 votes cast since September 18th. Uh, no uh, Richmond uh, Registrar's Office has ever dealt with an election like this. This is in the middle of a pandemic. And uh, I know they're doing the best they can to get the results uh, to the public as quickly as possible. And uh, I appreciate the work of many of the, wor of the staff over there that have been working their hearts out since September 18th. I have not received a phone call from any of my opponents. The question was, have any of my opponents conceded to me? I have not received a phone call from any of my opponents. Mark, do you believe standing here right now that you've won outright? Yes. <laughs> the question was, do I, standing here today, do I believe I've won outright? Yes. Uh, every indication that we've, we've, we've seen is that we won uh, six districts. And, um, uh, last time we won five districts, this time we won six districts. Uh, I believe, hmm? I'm sorry to interrupt, what are the six that you believe you uh, I mean, I'm gonna let the, the registrar's office provide the official update to the city, but my team has done some diligent work, as I said as well. They've tracked this from, you know, I've been working on this campaign now since the beginning of the year, uh, and the areas that we thought we could be successful in, we believe we were successful in. It's parts of South Side and East End and North Side. Matthew, you good? Matthew, Ben, you have another question? Yeah, Matthew, we had um, a couple of voters reach out to us yesterday while voting at the Wickham Court Precinct. They had indicated they saw no local races, including the mayoral on the ballot. Hmm. They had said, you know, one had quoted that they felt like they were robbed, given how close it was at the time with the Richmond mayoral and other races. Is there anything? You know, the question was about the issue at Wickham Court, and there were not uh, local races on some of the ballots. Obviously, we, that was obviously a concern to my campaign as well, as being a local elected official on the local ballot this time. Um, we asked about it. Uh, they, I think, did their best to rectify the issue uh, at hand as quickly as possible, getting in touch with some of those voters as well. Uh, but what I do respect from the registrar's office, that what they did was... Uh, uh, you know, they, they do their best to uh, bring about a, a fair election. Um, and uh, I know that, you know, what we see from today, from yesterday, is that we can continue to improve upon the way we go about doing that. And uh, this might be an improvement we see in the process moving forward. So your campaign was told that that issue had been resolved? It was brought to our attention by those on the ground. And obviously, we, we reached out to the registrar's office and the electoral board to try their best to rectify the issue. But they, they didn't tell you if it had been rectified? They told us they were able to reach out to some of the voters who may have been, you know. Uh, but also, you know, you know, here we got provisional ballots that are available to those who feel like that the ballot was incomplete. Mark, you have another question? You good? Uh, Frida, you good? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, has the registrar indicated to you when those final results will be uh, delivered to the public? Uh, the registrar uh, has not talked directly to me, uh, but we hope to see those results uh, provided to the public, uh, hopefully by the end of the day. And I think when those results are provided, I think uh, you'll see that uh, we uh, believe that we have the necessary number of districts uh, to be the victor in this election. Uh, the question was, do I have any comments on the, the council elections? First, I'm not going to comment on anything until I know the, uh, the details of the outcomes of all those elections. Uh, but I will also state that, first, I think 
every individual who chose to run for office, whether in school board or city council, who those who ran against me as well, running for office I think is one of the bravest, most courageous things you can do. Uh, and uh, I appreciate putting them, uh, I appreciate every one of them put themselves before the public to lead our city, whether it's in their na neighborhood or citywide. Uh, also, I will say that, um, you know, I I'm going to double down on unity, not on division. And my door will remain open to uh, all of those who are elected to the city council for us to continue to move a progressive, positive, uh, agenda forward for the residents of the great city of Richmond. Last uh, question, Karina. Uh, the Richmond uh, electoral board chairman actually just released a picture of numbers from the district showing you with a substantial lead in six of nine districts, pretty much saying that you will be the mayor for the next four years. Do you have comments hearing that after we've uh, <laughs> I don't know you now you're catching me off guard a little bit here. You know, breaking news. Um, you know, this has been a it's been a long, challenging year. It's been a long, challenging year, and I think uh, what the voters uh, have seen from me and my administration is that we love the work that we do, and um, you know, I am always humbled. I'm humbled by the um, opportunity to serve as the mayor of the city because not only do I love what I do, I also love the people of this great city and I, and I just love the city. And um, to get another four years to complete the work, um, as I've stated in the past, is the greatest honor of my life. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.